Hello friends and welcome to Fonadis Golf. Uh, we continue with these chapters about the rest of things that uh, influence the, the flight of a disc and now we're gonna see one of those myths that uh, surround the, the disc golf scene uh, when a beginner or an intermediate player that struggles to get 70 meters from its drives mm, then it comes an expert player and he says um, throw smooth because smooth is far is that true or is that a lie? Yes, it's true. And we're going to see from a pure physics point of view why is that true. Um, we have already seen that the most important variable to find the, the distance that we're going to reach with our disk is, the, of course, the initial speed. We have to throw fast if we want to go arrive uh, far away. Mm, but there are other variables like the you know the air resistance that we saw in the formula that one of the of the elements was the frontal area the disc uh, we have one disc we already saw that it has let's say more or less 20 centimeters of width um, one and a half centimeters of thickness so we can approximate that this is a rectangle with 20 times 1.5 which would be 30 uh, centimeters squared so uh, what happens when we throw um, very fast at full power uh, sometimes we introduce some what it's called an off-axis torque okay we want to throw at let's say five degrees up but we introduce some uh, parasite movements on our wrist or, on, or, in, or in the movement of our arm we are not a perfect machine and we introduce some um, off-axis torque that uh, creates uh, what's a, a wobble okay so the disc is not absolutely straight but it, it starts to shake like this okay we can already see that if our disc instead of being absolutely flat starts to wobble like this the effective area to calculate the drag gets up very quickly instead of 1.5 centimeters high it could be three centimeters high because of this difference so the air resistance would be doubled. So that is quite important. <music> uh, this uh, wobble that we introduce can be caused by this uh, fact of the off-axis torque that we often introduce when we are throwing near full power. And there is a second less known cause, which is the, the plastic deformation of the disc. When a pro player, he throws something like 100 kilometers an hour, 60 miles an hour. That is more or less 30 meters per second. Uh, on a backhand drive, he throws from here until here. So that would be a space of more or less one and a half meters. Which you know that we are almost as tall as, the, as this distance. So it should be more or less 1.5 meters. There is a formula, uh, which is the final speed uh, squared minus the initial speed squared is equal to 2 times space times acceleration. So if the final speed is 30 meters per second squared is 900, initial speed is 0, we divide by 2 times the space, 2 times 1.5, so 3, 900 divided by 3 is 300 you know the, the acceleration of gravity is more or less 10 uh, meters per uh, second squared so uh, 300 uh, divided by 10 is 30 30 g it's 30 times stronger than the acceleration of the gravity that is quite a lot that means that if we grab our disc like this let's suppose that we grab you know, one quarter of the disc and the other three quarters are free uh, so it's uh, it will be something like uh, 170 grams let's say that 120 grams are free uh, if we multiply by uh, 30 it's something like 3.6 kilos it's almost four kilos it's the same the fact of throwing a backhand throw at 100 kilometers an hour uh, applies on the disc the same force as if we would hang from the other side a weight of four kilos and that is quite a lot the, the, the discs are made for plastic those drivers have a wide rim so they are more resistant but if we throw a soft 
putter like this, if we hang four kilos from here, we can clearly see that it's gonna deform, okay, like a, like a rubber band, okay? It will deform and of course it will return to the original position and it will bounce and rebounce and it will dampen until it ends. Uh, if we zoom those two effects, first of them is the uh, off axis torque plus the plastic deformation of the disc, um, we introduce a fourth movement in the disc. We, we thought we had already all of them, but we had only three. Remember, translation with uh, which is the, the linear movement, okay? The rotation with this, uh, uh, the spin of the disc. Uh, precession, which is the, you know, the rotation of the uh, rotation axis, like a, like a top, when it goes rotating like this to resist the uh, movements, the, the moments. Uh, that is what caused the turn and the fade. But there is a fourth movement called nutation. Nutation sounds a bit weird, but that, that's its name. And nutation is the oscillation of this axis around the middle position of that uh, precession movement. So if the top is spinning around, it's not uh, slowly spinning like this, but it's also wobbling up and down and up and down and up and down around this middle uh, precession trajectory. Same thing happens with Earth. We also have those, those four movements. So it's important because this movement, this mutation, of course it's going to be dampened because we are moving through the air and both, if it's elastic, the, the same plastic material is going to dampen the movement. And if, we'll throw it, and if it's an off-axis torque, the air is going to dampen that movement. But of course, during that time, the frontal area is going to be double or whatever, way higher. And it's going to start dumping, 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 robbing us some speed, some energy to dampen that uh, parasite movement. So when the player says, OK, don't throw it full power, don't throw it 100%, try to throw it 80% because maybe, of course, your initial speed will be lower. You won't throw at 25 meters per second, but at 22 meters per second. Okay, so you're gonna lose distance. But if you throw it at 80% of your full power, you will probably introduce less off-axis torque, less parasite movements, and so your frontal area will be smaller and maybe you will gain more distance because of that the reduction in frontal area in, in, in the drag of the disc than what you would gain for throwing full power. So that is true. We can try to throw as, as slightly slower speeds if we are able to reduce that off-axis torque to reduce the mutation that we introduce in the disc and hence to reach farther with uh, our drives. See ya in Zona Disc Golf.